What is going on everybody? It is me again. It is HorrorFan34 and welcome to another video and welcome to day 5 of the 31 Days of Horror Challenge in October. Now that we are on day 5 of the challenge, I figured I would uh, do another one of my favorites that I think is underrated. Um, and it's definitely one of my favorites of the 90s. I'm going to go shift, shift to the uh, 90s here for a second here. And um, I feel like this is one of the most underrated horror films out there, especially like from the 90s and like in horror films in general. Um, and, you know, it's from a director who was greatly missed. I miss this guy a lot. And of course, that is Wes Craven. And that review is going to be on The People Under the Stairs. In every neighborhood, there is one house that adults whisper about and children cross the street across the street to avoid. Now, The People Under the, Under the Stairs came out in 1991, written and directed by the late, great Wes Craven. I miss Wes Craven a lot. When I heard he passed away, that was one of the most gut-wrenching pieces of news that ever hit, like, Hollywood in general, and, like, horror, in the horror community, too. Um... Very talented director. My favorite, my favorite of his is *The Serpent and the Rainbow*. Then I probably go with this film, and then I probably go *Shocker* second, and then this third. Although I really do enjoy the *Scream* movies, really enjoy Wes Craven's *New Nightmare* and the original *Elm Street*. *Deadly Friends* pretty decent as well. Uh, *The Hills Have Eyes* original I've warmed up to over the years. Not really a fan of the original *Last House on the Left*. I prefer the remake, um, but. Definitely one of Wes's uh, best films, in my opinion. Definitely one of his best. Now, the basic idea with the film is that you have this kid nicknamed Fool, played by Brandon Adams. Yes, the year before he did The Mighty Ducks. Yeah, before, yeah, Jesse Hall, before The Mighty Ducks, was in a horror film called The People Under the Stairs. Um, and basically, his family is very, he's like a blue, comes from a blue collar family. His mom's sick, and they have these asshole landlords. Who are about ready to evict them from their home. Ving Rhames character uh, comes by and says, "Like, there's these gold coins that you w you can come help me get." And so you understand, like, this kid's plight of like trying to steal this gold and these gold coins from this house because, like, his mom's sick and they're about ready to get evicted. And then basically they go to this house and basically it turns into a nightmare. They get taken and then they're trapped in the house by by these crazy people known as mommy and daddy played by Everett McGill, who was the Reverend in Silver Bullet, and he was in the original Dune, was in Twin Peaks, and you have Wendy Roby, who was also in Twin Peaks as well, which is this lady right over, right here, and basically, you know, this kid is transferred into a nightmare where this crazy house and all the crazy stuff that happens that's going on in this house, and, and that's pretty much the idea of the film. Now, what makes the film work, first off, is this cast. Um, Brandon Adams, before The Mighty Ducks, does a great job as the lead kid. He's very, very likable. You feel sorry for this kid. You, you can root for this kid. Very likable character. Uh, and some of the other supporting cast members in here, like you have like an Ever Everett McGill and Wendy Roby, who play the main villains of the film, Mommy and Daddy, do a great job. You just hate these people. And all the crazy stuff that happens in this house, like it's like there's some intense ones, like especially like with um, this girl right here, they're that they keep there, like they're the Wendy Roby is like putting her in hot water, giving her a bath, and while she's screaming, and then you have the feeling that Ever McGill has this whip that she's that he's beating the girl with. It's pretty intense stuff that they do in this house, and in a way, it's sort of like a sort of like a horror version of Home Alone in a way, but if you did Home Alone, but kind of like on the flip side where in Home Alone, you see like you can't, the, the, the he's putting up traps so that way the robbers don't come into the house. Well, this one, the kid's trapped in the house and he, and he can't get out. So it's, it's like a, basically a survivalist story. And I think Ving Rhames easily, probably one of my, probably one of the best characters in the film 
has some nice funny lines of dialogue. I'm not going to get into them because uh, I don't want to spoil them, but they're pretty funny. Uh, he's got a he's got a pretty good comic relief here and there. Always been a big fan of Ving Rhames, whether it be like you know Piranha or the Dawn of the Dead remake. You know, always been a fan of Ving Rhames. And some of the other cast members, you have AJ AJ Langer who is in Escape from L.A. Sean Whalen who plays Roach was one of the storm chasers in Twister and he was in just you, you look at Sean Whalen he's been in tons of stuff over the years does a great job as Roach um, and like I said like you know, and you have, you have a and then like it's a pretty cool like looking design like I like the look at the house like it's the, the, the setting is very well done when Brandon Adams and Ving Rhames are trying to escape this house like you see like the, there's padlocks on the outside of the home and they're going through the walls, trying to break through the walls and crawl through, and it's basically a horror sort of adventure movie trapped in this home, and it's just like it's it's pretty crazy, like what these people do, um, mommy and daddy as the the characters, um, you know, but all the stuff they do, you feel bad for the for their daughter because of what they do to her and. Like I said, like Wendy Roby puts her in a bathtub of hot water and she's screaming and Ever McGill beating her with the whip and, you know, bad girls must be punished. And, like, you know, these are just villains that you just absolutely hate and despise and they do a great job, uh, Wendy Roby and Everett McGill. And like I said, Brandon Ad, it's pretty cool. Like, you know, you don't really see many horror films these days where a kid is really the star of the film. I guess you could say like the closest one that was kind of like this, where a kid was the star of a horror film, was probably the was probably Child's Play because you had Alex Vincent as the little kid Andy. But not really other many horror films that were like where it had a kid as kind of like the main star of the film. Same thing with this one, and I think Brandon Adams does a great job as Fool. Uh, I really like his character. You can, he's easy to root for, and the, the makeup effects are done by. K and B, you know Robert Kurzman, Howard Berger, and Greg Nicotero. K and B did a great job on the makeup effects, and I and there is like some intent, like there's some gory bits in here too. It's definitely R rated, and I love the way that Wes Craven directs the film, and the musical score is also really good as well. Uh, by Don Peak, Don Peak did a great job on the score. I mean overall. The People Under the Stairs is definitely one of Wes's best films. Uh, it has a strong cast. It's got a creepy setting. And overall, just an underrated gem from the 90s. If, you, if you're a big fan of Wes Craven and you, if you want to see like some of his more unknown stuff that's not Elm Street, I highly recommend that you check out The People Under the Stairs. It's definitely worth a look. So that's pretty much it for my review for The People Under the Stairs. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.